So I just put out a video where I reviewed Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, and that was the very first Planet of the Apes movie I had ever seen. Just decided, I was like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go watch this movie and see if it's any good. Never seen a Planet of the Apes movie before. And then after that, I really enjoyed it. And then after that, I decided, you know what? I wanna go and watch all the Planet of the Apes movies. So last night, I watched the first Planet of the Apes movie from 1968. And my word, like that is, it is wild. It is a wild movie, let me tell you what, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna do a little bit of a spoiler and non-spoiler discussion here. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit of a non-spoiler review because if you haven't seen the movie, which I'm assuming most of you haven't seen the movie, if you haven't seen the movie, like look, like go watch it. It's on Hulu, uh, go watch it and like don't hear anything about it just go watch it it is actually pretty wild and then i'm also going to do a little bit of a spoiler discussion here <laughs> just talk about some of the funny things i found from the uh that is a little bit more spoilery so uh there'll be just it'll be stuff down below you can skip around if you want to <clears throat> anyways so non-spoiler stuff first of all obviously it is a very dated movie it is 1968 of course this is dated heavily dated there is overacting there is shoddy special effects yes very dated but for the time period this might actually be like one of the best uh sci-fi movies from the 60s and 70s like it's 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 actually kind of crazy and i think part of that is because um they don't have to do a ton of like really crazy special effects um, really the biggest thing is just the ape heads, really. I mean, that's, and obvious, obviously, that looks, by, our today, by today's standard, that looks terrible. Now, by their standards, uh, I think from what I've heard, it, it was like super groundbreaking. Like, honestly, this movie should be on my top 100 movies list. I don't know why it isn't. It should be, because it is actually pretty funny. Uh, or pretty wild of a movie, I should say. Um, but yeah, it's, it was, I was actually surprised that it was actually pretty, like, pretty good. It was, it was not as, like, I was expecting it to be, like, super cheesy, really bad. Like, I've seen, like, Star Trek from the 60s, you know, I've seen some, like, you know, okay, I, Kubrick fans are gonna hate me for this, but, like, even, like, 2001 A Space Odyssey, it's, it's so dated that there's almost no value in watching, except for like historical purposes or like educational purposes. There's almost no entertainment value left in 2001: A Space Odyssey. And throughout the whole throughout the whole movie, I was just thinking to myself, like, this is actually pretty wild because the story is basically, like, like ima imagine a story of an ape in a spaceship crashes to Earth and in like a primitive Earth, like we're talking like Middle Ages, right, and then and there's a, and there's like a bunch of apes that are ravaging these people's crops and then one ape happens to be able to talk and the rest of the, and like the whole like government and all this their society is trying to suppress that ape and trying to like eliminate that ape from like the knowledge and and so that nobody knows about its existence and try to deny that like there were sentient apes back in the day now reverse the roles and that's what this movie is it's wild like like everything you would hear about like today about why um like why like me, like humans are more are superior to animals is exactly the arguments they use of why apes are superior to humans and it's just crazy it, it is kind of ludicrous at times um how like how all this stuff goes down and everything it, it is it is just so funny um or at least I, it's not really trying to be funny, but I was just like, I was just like watching the movie and I'm like, oh, this is insane. Like this, this whole thing, it, they actually take the concept and play with the concept. And it's, I, I feel like that's something that you just don't see too much of nowadays where it's like, you know, cause it's, it's almost either too self-aware about like the fact that it's such an insane concept, but they go, they go like really far with it. And they actually like, okay, apes are the dominant. So it's like, we're going to write all the apes as if they were human, switch human and ape. And then we're going to write all the humans as if they were apes. And it's like, they literally switched them around and it is such crazy thing that that you're watching and it's like 
This is wild. It is absolutely worth a watch. Absolutely worth the watch. And if you if you like any of the Planet of the Apes, I don't think, as far as I'm aware, I don't think this movie has been remade. I haven't. I'll be honest. This is only the second Planet of the Apes movie I've seen. But from what I've heard about the plot lines, this is this movie has not been remade. Go watch that movie. Anyways, let's get into a little bit of spoilers here. So what ends up happening is you ha you, you start off on a spaceship and you have uh, George Taylor, who is your main character, and he is like basically signing off, and he's it basically shows in the uh, in the date like it's been 700 years. It's been like I don't know, like a couple months or something like that that they've been in there. Um, and it's a couple hundred years. It's really hard to say when they started their trip. Um, I think later in the movie they say it's about 18 months, but it's been like 700 years on Earth. Um, they kind of explain it as it's like the time dilation, right? Um, which is, I was like, okay, that's that's pretty cool. Um, so as you as you get closer to the speed of light, they're going light speed, and so time is 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 going rapidly on Earth, while it's going a lot slower for them. And then um, and then they crash land on the planet, which, you know, is Earth in like 2,000 years, which they don't know that at the time. Um, but they do, they do mention that it is 2,000 years in the future. And so uh, the main, so the, uh, there are four people, three men, one woman, the woman died in the cryosleep. And um, so then they, you know, they get out and when they, they come across the humans and George Taylor's just like, like if this, if this is the human population in six months, we'll be ruining this planet. And then, um, and then that's when the apes come in, and then they um, they have to, you know, they, they gather up all the humans. And out of the three, one of them dies. Uh, you don't see what happens to the other one. And then you see, and then George Taylor, he gets shot in the neck. At first, I was like, I thought that was probably going to be like a killing blow. But what they ended up doing is they made a uh, they made a mute while he was recovering, which is actually interesting because when they did that, because he couldn't speak. He, th he then seemed like all the other humans, um, except for the fact that uh, he, he would like he would try to speak, um, and then one of the apes was like, "Look, look, look! This this human's trying to speak! Oh my gosh! Isn't it so adorable? And it's like, oh, and I like to me it just immediately makes me think of a dog that's trying to talk and how we would respond as humans, and it was just like, what? And that's the first time he's just like, this is so wild." And then of course, you know, they, you know, they treat uh, George Taylor as a, they treat him as like an animal. You know, they put in collars on him. They get him back by spraying him with a hose. I say shut up! It's a man hose! A man hose! Um, then you, you know, um, and they, they, at one point they even put a woman in with him. And they're just like, and they're just like, like, hmm, you know, just thinking that they would mate, you know, just like, kind, of, kind of like how we would do with like dogs or something like that. And it, it just, all the, all this time, it was just like, this is just so ridiculous of a concept. And it was, it's both funny and also kind of like, huh, that is really interesting the way, you know, this is going on. Cause it makes sense, right? That's how we would, this is how we would treat animals, right? And so they're like, the, the apes are doing that to humans. And it's like, so like every, every time that they, do something new where it's like you know like they're making like uh there's a court case and you know they're making arguments and it's like it's like yeah that like this 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 is like if if an animal was trying to now granted personally i think that if there was if we happen to find an animal that could talk um i'll be honest i think we definitely should definitely pre preserve that because it's like and not, not like kill it and open it up but like you know, see what we can find out about it because like an animal that can talk is utterly insane. And this is something that like we absolutely need to, it's like we need to find out like what all is going on with that. But um, but then the, t the higher ups, you know, that's, that's what um, a, a couple of the scientists, that's what they're wanting to do. But then the higher ups, they're wanting to like kind of suppress the whole thing. Um, so it's, it's just a, such a weird and crazy concept and then of course at the end unfortunately i had it spoiled for me um so i knew it was coming uh when i when i read the description i was like oh i thought they went to another planet um and then i had it spoiled for me unfortunately uh, <laughs> that, I, I think that would have been like a, a crazy plot twist uh just being like oh my gosh and it's earth you know seeing the statue of liberty just on a beach shore and it's just like 
you know, it's 2,000 years in the future. And, and, and at, by the end of the movie, I was like, what happens next? I want to know what happens next. And when I read the description for the next movie, it's like, oh, it's, they're, they're doing something different, kind of. It's like, ah, oh, it kind of sucks. Um, and oddly enough, I was actually kind of rooting for George Taylor and uh, the woman he was, uh, that was put in the cage with him. Uh, they call, he called her Nova. And uh, like, like, even though she's like more of a, like an animalistic kind of human, and I was like, you know what? I was kind of rooting for him. I mean, because <laughs> he, he like he, he ended up he's, he's like it's like it's like ah she's the only one around so uh, he ended up taking her with him when he was escaping but um, I was like actually I'm like you know what kind of a cute couple not gonna lie uh, so I mean for again for like a 1960s movie I was expecting something to be really bad and I was just so pleasantly surprised by like an actually good movie. Like that was like actually like entertaining and had more to offer than just like a poor execution on a crazy concept. You know, I, I was thinking that like all the 70s movies and probably the rest of the 70s movies are probably going to be absolute trash anyways. But, um, you know, but like I was, I was like, I was like, oh, the newer movies are going to be good. The older ones are going to be bad. Um, so it's it's kind of it's kind of funny. It's kind of wild. Uh, definitely go check this one out. Uh, if you've if you've seen the Planet of the Apes movies, you have to check this one out. If you've seen the original 1968 Planet of the Apes, you got to tell me what do you think of it down below. Uh, and if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you want to see more reviews like this, go ahead and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.